Hello again. Um, as I'm sitting here in my food trailer outside of my store, I realized that um, I have a lot of time to care waiting for customers to show up. So while I'm while I'm waiting for customers to show up, I decided to to make this small video on the plan of salvation. Okay, we're gonna talk about the plan of salvation, and hopefully. You stay till the end. We're going to talk about, and we're going to start with the plan, and we talk about the in the beginning. Then we're going to keep, keep keep on going going down. Okay. First, you must understand from the first chapter of Genesis through the closing scene of Revelation, the the Bible is the book of God's salvation. Okay, from the from start to finish, it's one unifying theme is that of grace and forgiveness of sinners and and forgiveness for sin sinners to God redeeming work in Jesus Christ. Whatever else you gain through the reading of the Bible. It would be tragic. Let me say it again. It would be tragic if you miss the heart of his message for you. God's gracious provision of Jesus Christ as the atonement for sin. Okay? Now, let's start in the beginning. When God created the heaven and the earth, his work was perfect and pure. God looked upon all he had created and judged it to be very good. According to Genesis 1 verse 31, he took great pleasure in what he made. In the culmination of his creation came with Adam and Eve. They were made in the very image of God, which made them capable of having fellowship with God and bringing glory to his name in Genesis 1 verse 27. In the Garden of Eden, however, through deception and disobedience, Adam and Eve sinned against God, causing a break in the relationship with him. Sin is real, okay? And sin is deadly. The guilt that resulted from their disobedience caused Adam and Eve to hide from God and to attempt to cover their personal shame. Because they had disobeyed God's command. And they were now flawed and shameful in God's presence. Adam deliberately chose a path of self-will and rebellion. Which brought sin and death. Including spiritual death in the world. Sin came into the world through one man and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because all sinned. According to Woman 5 verse 12. The whole human race is affected by Adam's sin. To cover the shame and nakedness of Adam and Eve, the Lord made coats from an animal skin for them to wear, according to Genesis 3 verse 21. God thou made the first sacrifice, and it followed the clear promise of a Redeemer. When God pronounced these words of judgment upon the serpent or Satan, it will put 
enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. According to Genesis 3 verse 15, this prophetic word speak of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross of, of Calvary. Okay? This is the beginning. Now, let's talk about the story of redemption. Okay? So, the story of, of redemption and sacrifice began. And it is repeated throughout the word of God. Culminating in the coming of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on our behalf. We discover through the Bible that a personal relationship with God is not dependent on good works that we do or on on church membership or even on living a highly moral life. Rather, God's amazing grace is the fountain through which redemption flows to us. Separated from God by sin and guilt, we all face two primary spiritual needs. First, we need to be restored to fellowship with God. We are truly guilty before God. And somehow we must find forgiveness. We must face the problem of our sin. And there is no answer to this need within ourselves. The only answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, we need power to change our lives. Our sin revealed the spiritual depravity of our heart, the selfishness, the lust, the greed, the pride, and the anger that are so destructive. The heart, God said, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked in Jeremiah 17 verse 9. If we are going to be changed something, we must, we, if we are going to be changed something, must be done in our heart to turn our lives around. Jesus taught that Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, according to John 3, verse 3. Only the blood of Jesus can take away the guilt of our sin, and only the Holy Spirit can come into our heart and make us new people. Okay? This is how the story of redemption begins. Now, we're going to go through redemption through Jesus Christ. Redemption through Christ. Redemption often involves the concept of purchasing something back that has been lost by the payment of a, re of a ransom. It, it can mean a deliverance from some sort or or of, it can mean a deliverance from some sort of confinement, such as the case with the deliverance of the children of Israel from their bondage to slavery in Egypt, according to Exodus 14, verse 29 to 30, and also 15, verse 2. There are many passages in the New Testament that represents Christ's suffering as a ransom or price, and the result secure it secure is a purchase or redemption 
according to Acts 20, verse 28. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 to 20. Galatians 3, verse 13. Galatians 4, verse 4 to 5. Ephesians 1, verse 7. Colossians 1, verse 14. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. 5 to 6. Titus, verse 2, chapter 2, verse 14. Hebrews 9, verse 12. 1 Peter 1. 18 to 19, Revelation 5, verse 9. Okay? The idea running through all these texts is that of a payment made for our redemption. Jesus made the penalty. Jesus paid the penalty of our sin and redeem us. Wow. He paid for our sin and he redeemed us. That's got to be love. The penalty for our sin and rebellion is death. Jesus stepped in and laid down his life and took the penalty we deserved. The death against us is now viewed as simply canceled, but as fully paid. But the Old and New Testament proclaim salvation as an accomplished fact. Christ's blood or life, which he surrendered for us, is the ransom by which we are freed from sin. Blood is mentioned 460 times in the Bible. 14 times in the New Testament, Jesus spoke of his own blood. Why? Because by the shredding of his blood, on the cross he accomplished the salvation of of everyone who live who believe you must believe if you want that blood to flow for you you must believe he already give himself as a ransom for you all you have to do is believe He accomplished the salvation of everyone who believes. So believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Believe that he died for you at Calvary. Believe that he lived again. Believe. And then you shall be saved. Amen? Believe. Believe. Believe in Jesus Christ. Believe he's the son of God and accept him. Now, there is the extraordinary news, extraordinary good news of eternal life. The gospel of John tells the redemptive 